Welcome back to America's Backroads. I'm going to keep my hands in my pocket here. It's about 50 degrees today. Yeah, a little cool. Ford started up real nice. Um, just gave it full choke and it started up, boom, just like that. Um, didn't, couldn't even hear it turn over. So, um, you know, t in today's video, I thought it would be fun to go up to Bluntville. Now, Bluntville is a really interesting community, and you don't hear much about it if you're not a local. But it's a very old community. In fact, is it's the county seat of Sullivan County. And when you're in it, and when you're in downtown Bluntville, you'd never think that it was the county seat. Now, it's not a gigantic county. The whole county has, I think, only 160,000 people, but I, I do believe there are much bigger cities than Bluntville. But the thing about Bluntville is the fact that it's old. Um, early 1800s for certain, and I think some of the buildings may date back more. There's log cabins there and everything, and they're in remarkable shape. A lot of pride in that town, that's for certain. And uh, a lot of nice people, too. So let's go up and visit them, take a drive up there, and uh, we'll show you some really old buildings that are they're in really good shape. Uh, give you an idea of what people, how they lived in the 1800s. And uh, they got a big, beautiful courthouse there, of course, too. That's typical of Tennessee. You'll have a lot of these gorgeous courthouses that were actually made about 1900, I think. And, uh, but they're remarkable. They've got these gorgeous columns and everything. Um, I think you're going to enjoy today's travel. And I know I am. I always enjoy it when I go to Bluntville. Hey, you take it easy. Let's go ahead and get started on our trip. Hey, thanks for coming along with me. I appreciate you. Bye-bye now. You know, I just love these old roads in uh, Tennessee, especially eastern Tennessee, I think. I mean, there's probably a lot of great roads everywhere in Tennessee, but um, these are just so great. I mean, and they're perfect for a car like this. We're on the road now, headed out to Blentville. It's a bit of a ride, but it's a, it's a great drive. I'll shorten it up so it won't be too long for you guys. And um, I just love these roads. And you'll, these little small towns you can go through in from time to time. Of course, you could take the freeway, but that wouldn't be America's back roads, would it? Got this beautiful church here, just gorgeous. A um, lot of churches everywhere you go. Now, in eastern Tennessee, we've got a pretty good sized lake here. That's uh, Boone's Lake, named after you know who. Um, so, everything is around, you know, Boone around here. So, you know, you have all kinds of facilities. I mean, everything you can think of, roads, everything. Daniel Boone, that's the guy. In fact, is he owned a rather large section of it at one time. I, f I read one time how much he owned, and it was uh, an amazing amount of... Uh, property of course back in his day um, you know it, it was just available it was no, it was not a big thing but nowadays it is now we got something coming up here on this barn that every time I drive by it I'm thinking I should know what that stands for is that like a, a Quaker thing or some similar to that I love the barn and I also love that whatever it is Quakers are cool people. 
I know a couple of them, you know, and I'm proud to call them my friends. They're great people. It doesn't matter where you are in the country, you know, uh, what is it, the Quaker, Mennonites, they have strong family values. I really kind of respect that. Um, some would say their ways are kind of strict, but I don't know. Um, another life, I could have done that. And, uh, and I think I would have been pretty happy. So, you know. Or a farm in general. I just love that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of farms. Um, you know, you go through... Uh, I've driven through uh, Indiana a number of times for, oh my gosh, all my life really. And Indiana is a gorgeous place too. I often thought I'd own a farm there and grow corn. Go figure. I don't know. Why corn? I don't know. I, I, I just like the way it looks when it's in the fields. And it tastes pretty good too. Especially sweet corn, huh? So here we go. Look at this beautiful scenery that we have coming up here. It's just really kind of nice. Um, you know, you just can't do any better than this. And if you can, you know, uh, I've never seen it. I mean, look at this. You have collapsing buildings over here, which is kind of sad. Uh, a lot of the farmers don't fix up the buildings. And it's my understanding um, that they tax you at a higher rate if your building is in better shape. So they try to keep it functional, but not too good looking. So it, it, sometimes they'll even be over at an angle. And these guys are artists at knowing how much they can lean before they'll fall. And if they lean enough, the taxes go down. You know, uh, taxes shouldn't be based on that. Um, especially historical items. I don't know, maybe that's not accurate. If somebody wants to correct me on that, um, I'd, I'd be fine with that, because I'd love to hear the taxes weren't based on that. But, you know, I've heard that if you put up a, a nice fence around your house, your taxes go up. So go figure. So a lot of people don't do, you know, a lot of maintenance around here. Now here you have Boone Lake, which was a man-made lake. Um, I'm thinking it was made in the late 50s. And uh, it generates power. They just did uh, some major work. I think it took them six or seven years to work on the dam because it had started to leak. And there is some talk that they might even actually build a new dam. So I don't know. Um, you know, it's clean energy. Um, I think by the time you figure out the money that they've spent in it, it's not cheap energy, but it's clean. So, you know, you just have to figure it out. Look at these cows, man. Cool, huh? Going down a country road and you see cows on both sides. I don't know. That's beautiful. That's why I live in Tennessee. You know. Now I have to admit, I haven't been up here too many times, so I'm hoping I don't take a wrong turn. I could fire up my GPS, but that kind of takes some of the fun of it. Look at this uh, beautiful barns here, huh? Now that one probably isn't too old, I can tell from looking at it, but it's got a lot of character, the one on the right there. Some of these barns, you look at them and uh, they're really gorgeous. I mean, I, gorgeous in a historical point of view. You know, some of them are made out of things like massive chestnut logs. And fact is, when we go to Bluntville, there's a log cabin there that the walls are made up out of three uh, timbers because they're so big. Uh, it was made from a massive tree. 
and I, I don't know I've never seen a lot I've seen a few log cabins in my time but I've never seen one that only took three to make the whole wall um, you know usually you know especially today you know they're, they're made out of small timbers but you know we're talking about log cabins that were built in the 1800s and I think one or more may be from the 1700s and we're gonna get to a walk up to them and I guess you know almost get personal with them you know you can walk right up and and you can touch them and it, I mean to me that's great I just love these long winding roads now if you're not from an area that has them uh, you can get a little car sick I don't if you're driving um, it's not as bad if you're a passenger in the back seat you may be in trouble if you're not used to it if you live in Indiana where everything is flat and straight um, you're probably gonna have some issues uh, <laughs> uh, I know this because I married an Indiana girl and we we bought a house in a forest a long time ago and uh, it didn't go well <laughs> but you get used to it and um, so especially if she was driving um, it would be okay uh, just mostly the first time you know um, and sometimes if we're driving and we're on a road like this um, we took a drive up here the other day and I don't remember her saying anything about getting car sick so um, I know my sister used to get car sick when uh, we were when all the kids were young and they'd let her sit up in the front and that would help yep it's like every time you turn a corner um, you've got something new and different to look at and it's it's not like any other little piece of the road um, it's all kind of unique and the woods around here I mean man they're great and I don't think there's anything in these woods that will harm you you can go walking through the woods now you get down south a little bit more you've got water moccasins and every other uh, thing I don't know if they have snapping turtles around here I haven't seen any um, you know you're not gonna you're not gonna rattlesnakes I don't know I, I, again if they're around they're very limited so you know it's kind of an interesting part of the country if you ask me why I wanted to retire here so but again I don't do retirement so I've got to do something if you guys like this channel I can do some of these videos of some of my favorite places in Tennessee and in addition to that we can go find some other places I'm right because I can't honestly say I've been around I've gone this way perhaps twice I'll let this guy go you can tell some people are just in a hurry especially when you're driving in 1935 Ford Okay. Now, 
Now, I want you guys to comment if you would. Now, I never know how much to leave in. And I'm inclined to leave more of the driving in this time because that's really what this channel is about. Now, I know some of you are going to say, hey, no, just get to the town. And I get that too. Um, if you feel that way, just skip ahead. Um, but this, this is beautiful. And if you're from a different part of the country, you know, you're never going to get to see it. You know, there's a very good chance. But it's so beautiful. I could drive up and down these roads every day. I think it would be kind of cool, actually. Just keep rolling along. Look at these hills. You know, it adds character. When I was a young man, I would ride a motorcycle. And uh, I love the twisties. I rode vintage bikes and stuff. And uh, they were a lot of fun. You know, now that I'm older, I don't really feel like riding motorcycles anymore. But um, I did when I was young. It's dangerous. But, and for those people who want to ride them I, I'm certainly not gonna say you shouldn't because they're you know it's it's a lot of fun they're fun and I think anybody who rides will tell you it's an element of risk and they probably had a couple of close situations well we got some wind out there today I'm gonna tell you that earlier it was like 50 degrees but I think it's turned a lot colder since then. Uh, the GoPros were giving me a real hard time. They didn't want to start or anything. And uh, you kind of have to warm them up underneath your jacket and something to, to get them to function. And I'm hoping that uh, they're going to continue to work.
There's a log home right there, but it's a newer one. You know, process logs. That's what I'd call them anyways. Now look at that farm up there. You see a lot of that stuff. There's still a lot of farms around here. I don't know how they make it. Turn back there. It's uh, interesting. Take the next right onto Muddy Creek Road. Oops. It can be a little tricky downshift. I did that one before. Got him double clutching. Okay, so now we're going to. Okay, so here we are. We've made it to Blentville, and um, this is kind of like downtown. I would call it historic uh, Blentville, and uh, I'm going to show you a lot of different things before we take off. Um, let's kind of wander over here. We've got some uh, really cool uh, vintage cabins. Uh, not cabins, log cabins. Um, and it's amazing. They honestly are. Now these, it's my understanding, were all moved here. So let me go ahead and kind of give you an idea of what they look like. And these were the ones that I was talking about earlier that were only from three logs. And if you look at the size of that log, from way down here to way up here that's quite a log and then you can go with the next one and then there's one more so let's walk around the other side I'm gonna show it to you spin it around let's do it this way now let's get a good pretty good distant view now it's called the granny Canyon uh, cabin <laughs> it's called the granny cabin because uh, this lady Virginia Cadwell um, she bought that in up there and her I believe her husband was the judge back in 1950 or so and so she bought that in some of these buildings I think that one was already here but she bought some of these others and she saved them because otherwise they were going to be torn down to stuff 
and so uh, she brought them in from different places. Let's come up and uh, read what it says here. I think it's kind of interesting. Okay, so uh, this unique log cabin has only three logs per wall. It's like I was telling you a few minutes ago. And uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what that word means. Punch on? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so you guys can correct me and tell me what I'm doing wrong there. It was moved here from Hawkins County and Virginia Cadwell named it the Granny Cabin and it is furnished to show the roughest dwelling of the early settlers. And again, look at that, the logs on the side. You're going to see that there are only three logs. When Now, people make log cabins today, they don't make them like that. In fact, I think this is kind of rare in, in itself. And you can see, okay, between here Hopefully you can see this. Uh, through here and all the way up here, that's one log. And uh, it's amazing. Let's get back and get a full picture of it. Maybe we can get up here right up in this little hill. Now isn't that something? So if you were back in the 1800s or before, that's kind of like what your dwelling would be. And... Uh, it's amazing. It's beautiful, if you ask me. Um, probably wouldn't want to live in it. It'd be kind of drafty, but here's another one. Let's see what this... Okay. Let's see if you can get up real close here. Okay, the King Island Works uh, cabin. This 1790... Okay, here we go. 1790 log cabin was the office of the James King Iron Works, which was located at the junction of Beaver and Steel Creeks near Bristol, Tennessee. Well, that's real close to here. Bristol, Tennessee is, I don't know, 10 miles maybe? Um, when, this, uh, when the city announced plans to construct its wastewater treatment plant on the site in 1950, the little cabin appeared doomed. Virginia Cadwell had it moved here to save it. It now houses Mrs. Cadwell's collection of 19th century spinning and weaving equipment. Now, I don't know when this is open, uh, if ever anymore. I don't know if you can see up there or not. You guys are gonna see if you can. I don't know if you what, what you're looking at. I can see a spinning wheel a little bit in there. So let's kind of take a step back here and look at the side here. Isn't that something? Oh my. It really is to me. Okay. Look at that. It's amazing. How can that wood last so long out in the weather, huh? There must be a lot I don't know because I wouldn't think that it could. Hey, maybe we can peek in this window. It's not so high. Oh my. Uh, it looks like loom or something. I don't, again, I'm not an expert. Let's see if I can get you closer to the window. Right in there. Now, isn't this amazing that things like this still exist? Thank you, Virginia, for saving this for us. We will forever be grateful, at least I will, that I had a chance to see this. Now, it's like we're going back in time. Again, I don't understand how those logs lasted. You see that a lot in Tennessee. Okay, so what the heck is this? This is a brick structure. Again, it's on a stone foundation. Okay, so let's get up close and read this. William Derry built this kitchen about 1810 to serve as inn. Okay, yeah, that's the inn right around. We're going to go see that, uh, at least the outside. Um, Virginia Cadwell described it as a tumble down in 1940 before the west and north walls were reconstructed. It served as her weave house. It is now furnished as an early 1800s kitchen. Okay, let's see if we can peek in there.
I think we can see in there pretty good, huh? Cool. Okay, now that's the Dairy Inn. And that's been around forever and ever and ever. So she had that. She made it at her house, I think. And then she put these dwellings in the back. Bought them and saved them. Okay, now this is uh, another. Let's get a nice view of it here. Okay, this is called an 1840 smokehouse. Judge and Mrs. Joseph A. Cadwell, otherwise Virginia Cadwell, um, relocated the 1840 Sullivan County smokehouse to its site shortly after eight, 1940 when it was bought and restored the Dairy Inn for their residence. Cool. Now, if I remember right, these were like slave quarters. Um, Tennessee was kind of in the middle. It was kind of, parts of it were for slavery, parts of it weren't. And, uh, oh boy, look at this. We got a broken window pane here. You guys want to see what's in there? We can go on the other side of the window. At least you guys can. Maybe I'll just stick this up a little bit. I don't know if this is breaking the rules or not. I hope not. Okay. We should get that pain note fixed. Okay, let's read what this says. Slave quarters. Okay, I was right. William Derry built this brick building in the early 1800s to house his slaves. Very few original slave buildings still exist in northeastern Tennessee. Can't see too much there, can we? I'm trying to cover it, but I can't. This is interesting here, because it used to be across the street, the Fane Law Office. This little build, building originally stood across the street and served as an office for attorney John Fane in the late 1800s. Some Bloutville residents remember it as the office of attorney Homer Smith in the second quarter of the 20th century. It was saved from demolition by Virginia Cadwell who relocated it after 1948. Okay, so you imagine going in there, you're in a little trouble, and the attorney helps you and gets you out of your trouble. I can dig that. You also got a bell to ring. I'd ring it, but somebody might come over and get after me. Uh, oh, we should walk around out front here from the very end. Let me see, I think we have to go around to the right. The left has some gates, and we may or may not be welcome to use them. Look at that, though. The stone. It's cold. It was uh, 50 degrees earlier today but I got delayed here and there and I don't know how cold it is right now but I'm thinking it's getting into the high 30s okay so here we go this tells a lot of the history because like I say this was an area where they had battles and everything during the Civil War Civil War was a very sad time I mean, all the other wars we had, we fought people from other countries and things like that. We, uh, here we, 
fought our brothers and sisters. And every death was an American death. And a lot of people don't realize it, but a lot of families, I mean, mothers and kids and everything were killed during these times. Look at, you can very get an idea, this is old. Let's look at this a little bit. Boy, you, that's the original. Now there are some pieces down the bottom that have been replaced. Here over in this section here too. But it, it, it stays, you know, you can see a lot of it is in fact original. There's a sign here that says, maybe this is it down here. Okay, National Register of Historic Places, cool. Very cool. And the old Deary Inn. Okay, built shortly after 1785. I knew some of these buildings dated to the 1700s. By William Derry, stopping place for many distinguished travelers of early days. Andrew Jackson, James K. Polk. You know, it goes on and on. Um, Andrew Johnson. And it was run as an inn till 1930. I'm not sure what this building is down here. It's got dual pane windows in it, so it's been upgraded quite a bit. Oh, this is a fun one. Let's go to this one. This is kind of cool because this building is now obviously it's an all cabin a vintage log cabin really cool right and uh, they have appalachian music heritage association oh you know that's going to be good and it's a jam section session i can't hardly talk because i'm so cold um every friday six to ten o'clock today's friday but i don't think i can hang around that long not going to get any warm. Let's see what it says here. I might not read it for you, but I'm going to get it real close as I can, and you guys can stop it and kind of look. Cool. I'm going to come back another time for that jam session. They say it's just getting started after COVID. Uh, COVID had slowed it down pretty much. I wonder if we'll, they'll let us in the courthouse. That'd be kind of fun, don't you think? Would you like to check out a, a courthouse from, uh, I think, like I said earlier, I think they were built around 1900, most of these. And um, they just went around Tennessee. Every, um, you know, major uh, county seat had one. Let's see what we got here. There's a veterans, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guards, got it all. Sullivan County, dedicated to all veterans of Sullivan County and the honor and glory of those who prou proudly served and kept our count, uh, country and land of freedom. Dedicated July 4th, 1994. Freedom isn't free. This talks about one of the battles of Glenfield. And you can read that right there. You can just stop it. Done by the Tennessee Historical Commission. Maybe I should get back a little bit and see if I can... Huh? 
kind of cool. Okay, let's see what we got. Well, you can just barely get it in. Now I've Man, these are big posts. Hollow. But cool, nevertheless. Oh boy. Tad bit warmer in here. Well, I'll take a bench. And that's talking about the old dairy again. Picture of it. They have to read out to you, but this is the Virginia statute for religious freedom, 16th of January, 1776. Uh, 86. <laughs> Sorry about that. Obviously, why well, everyone knows why I did that. Should we walk up these stairs? I lived in this town and I had a good book I wanted to read I think I'd come over here right there and sit and read it get nice window light everything let me go ahead and try it out the chair well, let's turn it around so you guys can check me out here do I look comfy I feel comfy Look at that up on top. Isn't that something? I mean, is that a beautiful picture or what? Gorgeous. Look at that. Wow. Look at that chandelier. With this wide angle lens. It looks pretty far away, but the reality it isn't. Look at that beautiful banister. It's like there's like a, a mini porch out here. I imagine if you were having a parade, they'd open them up. Beautiful. Okay, let's take a look from here. Does that look cool? over there until they throw us out.
can tell this flooring down here is from the 50s or before. It's asbestos, you can tell from looking at it. You know, it kind of looks like you're in a 1950s shower or 40s. The bull nose up here, corner. You could put that in the shower. Look at, look at this. I think that's so cool. This railing is all kind of cool too because it looks like it's stainless steel. The feel is very nice and smooth. So this is a, it was an addition because we went in here, but then we were able to go over here. You know, it's kind of like offices and such. And again, based on what I was seeing inside, it was probably built in the 50s because the green tile kind of gives it away. Maybe late 50s. Let's see what we got here. James Brigham, a pioneer of the Revolutionary War soldier, purchased 1,070 acres along Muddy Creek in modern day Sullivan County between 1782 and 1787. On December 11th, 1792, he deeded 30 acres to John Anderson. George Maxwell and Richard Gammon, the new Sullivan County Commissioners for the construction of the County Courthouse and Jail of Glenville on September 2, 1797, Brigham purchased 1,200 acres from John Selby, the son of Evan Selby, along the Cumberland River in Montgomery County. He died there on November 29th. 1814 famous I believe this was a civil war battle yeah confederate and federal forces again a sad it's a very sad time in our country Okay, well, I'm thinking there's so many more things. I could come back here another time and I could spend literally forever here. Honestly, we'd have no difficult time doing that at all. So let's go ahead and uh, say, hey, I hope you've enjoyed this little touch. I mean, there's the cabin that we saw over there where they have the music and you can come in there. Uh, listen to Appalachian music. That's going to be a lot of dulcimers and stuff like that. There was a famous dulcimer maker. Ah, uh, he skips me my my brain for the moment. But he is uh, he made a dulcimer for Mayville Carter, and I think there's one in the ah uh, oh, I forget the name now. It's a famous museum there. It's uh, by the the federal. He's got uh, dulcimers, and he was well known. In fact, is he was so well known that when foreign dignitaries would come here, they uh, would often give them uh, a dulcimer, but made by him, which was really cool. My son has a couple of them. Uh, he made quite a few over a period of time. 
and he was well known. He died about 20 years ago, and uh, he just enjoyed making dulcimers and was considered to be one of the best. Archives and Tourism Regional Research Center. Now, I talked to this gentleman, I think his name is Matt. I talked to him yesterday, as a matter of fact, and um, he was in a, a very interesting guy, and apparently you can do research in there. Um, you need an appointment or something. But uh, there's a lot of research. What kind it is, I'm not really sure, but uh, probably historical in nature. Probably a lot of information about the Civil War. So, in any case, I appreciate it. Thank you for hanging in there. I already did an outro, but we'll just say goodbye. It's time to go on this one. If you'd like to do uh, follow me around and more uh, videos of this type of nature, uh, hopefully on a warmer day. <laughs> I keep on putting my hands in my pocket. Uh, in case you wondered there, I don't know if you see that or not. Uh, we'll have to cut that out probably. But in any case, um, thank you very much. I've had a great time in spite of it being cold. Thank you. Bye-bye now.